Uber migrates one trillion records from Dynamo to Ledger Store and saves six million dollars annually. I mean, that sound that sounds exciting. I mean, it it only took forty engineers. <laughs> It took 40 engineers and $20 million a year in maintenance, but man, we're saving $6 million right now. Here we go. Now, Uber migrated all of its payment transaction data from DynamoDB and Blob Storage into a new long-term solution, a purpose-built da- uh, data store named Ledger Store. The, honestly, this sounds like crypto, Ledger Store, and it's not Tiger Beetle, so already feeling pretty, you know, already feeling like I don't trust this at all. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, Dynamo and Blob. I know uh, Uber wrote this a mono thingy, but it sounds insanely hard. I'm sure it is. The company was looking for a cost savings and had previously reduced the use of Dynamo DB to store hot data, 12 weeks old. The move resulted in significant savings and simplified the storage architecture. Uber built Golfstream, its payment platform in 2017, and used Dynamo DB for storage. Due to rising storage costs, Dynamo DB was used only for the most recent data, 12 weeks, and older data was stored in Terablob, an S3 like service in house by uber okay interesting cho- interesting choices isn't there like a lot of off-the-shelf stuff for just making storage of of data easier interesting uh you know companies companies creating their own stuff classic this is just classic you know there is a bit of not invented here syndrome at uh, a lot of these larger companies uh you know and netflix we did it all the time is it completely it's completely normal, honestly. It's completely normal to find these things that happen. Uh, in the meantime, the company started working on the dedicated solution for storing financial transactions with data integrity uh, guarantees. And Kashik, a uh, tech lead at Uber, explains the unique challenges of creating a bespoke data store. Ledger Store is an immutable storage solution at Uber that provides verifiable data completeness and correctness guarantees to ensure data integrity for these transactions, considering that ledger- ledgers are the source of truth for any financial event or data movement at Uber. It is important to be able to look up ledgers from various access part, uh, patterns via ind- indexes. This brings uh, this brings in the need for trillions of indexes to index hundreds of billions of ledgers. It's a lot of data. It is a lot of data. Should have just used Tiger Beetle. This does feel like a Tiger Beetle moment. Uber is a very interesting because they are mature enough to require writing their own code software items, but none of it involves uh, the cloud in any way, which makes uh, which makes sense to me. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's it's very interesting. It's very interesting because Visa is at what forty thousand or f- what is it forty thousand requests per second, times uh, times what is that? That's uh, f- per minute twenty four uh, times three sixty five. So how many requests are uh, is Visa doing? Uh, they're doing twenty one trillion effectively a year. I'm curious what this equates to. You know, like what I, what I mean by that is like what is what are they doing? That requires such intensity, and what is Visa doing? I'm just curious, like what these financial companies are using. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, that, oh yeah, that's only 21 billion a year. So how many requests per second are they doing? Are you telling me that Uber does more requests per second than Visa? Sorry, you're totally right. I think a Visa has the advantage that in their data is extremely se- uh, segmentable. They're on IBM mainframe. Okay, interesting. Location updates. Yeah, well, but they're well, they're talking about Ledger Store is a mutable solution that provides verifiable completeness and correctness that guarantees to ensure data integrity for these transactions. Considering the ledger is the source of truth for any financial event or data movement at uh, Uber. Oh, data movement is data movement like the movement of the car. Visa is using Cobalt. Is that Cobalt mentioned? I don't know. It's just it. That's what is confusing to me. Is like what what are what what is these needs that it's so it's that intense? You know, again. Obviously, we don't work there. We don't know all the requirements. You know, you, you, you think you understand something, but you truly don't understand something. I think it's logs. Dogecoin mentioned, potentially they use blockchain, maybe. Ledger Store supports strongly and eventually consistent indexes. For strongly consistent indexes, the data store uses a two-phase commit. In the first, uh, let's see, it first persists in the uh, the indent on the index and subsequently persists the record. Lastly, if the record write succeeds, the intent is asynchronously committed or rolled back in the case of failure. There was a lot of words that were almost the word index in there that got me a little bit confused. It, prefer- let's see, it persists the indent in the index, and if the intent is asynchronously committed. This is a lot of, this is a lot of, there's a lot of in, I-N words in that one sentence. I think indent is misspelled. Are you sure? Because I'm trying to figure out what it is, and I'm not going to lie to you. I don't really know what's happening here. Okay, I don't know what an indent is, but I'm starting to feel like I'm playing Halo. Okay, we got the index. Okay, we got intent. The graph makes more sense. Okay. in Look, insert the indent with an intent of 
index. What the hell's happening here? Okay, application insert uh, into the ledger store. The ledger store writes uh, intent uh, to index A. Okay, writes it to intent or to B. Success is said, writes record to uh, table record. So it has to write to these two indexes and then it writes to the record table and then it commits to these indexes. Yeah, I guess I don't understand why, why right? Thoughts on UML diagrams? I don't mind sequence diagrams. This is a sequence diagram. I think sequence diagrams are really great on showing uh, the arbiter. This is very Halo 5. Uh, but I think, in, I think sequence diagrams are really great at just showing you what's happening in what order. Because it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't tell you code. And that's okay. I know a thing about the credit card company and private blockchain that I helped uh, work on. But I don't think I can say anything about it. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool story, Shy Right. Uh, two phase commit for strongly uh, consistent indexes. Okay, to offload older uh, ledger data to cold storage, Ledger Store uses time range indexes to support temporal queries. Uber moved from using DynamoDB and DocStore for storing time range indices. Uh, the original solution utilized two tables in DynamoDB, one optimized for writes and a second for reads. This design was dedicated by Dynamo's DB capacity management and avoided hot partitions and throttling. The new design uses the doc store database with a single table and leverages prefix scanning for efficient reads. Okay. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff here. Ledger supports the index lifecycle management, automating data rendering or re-indexing in the case of index definition changes. The process creates a new index, backfills the data from the old index, performs relevant validation, swaps indices, and deletes the old one. Damn, that's, they, they're really going to town on this thing. I'm still shocked that they're they're doing this all all in store. I, I I swear I must be missing something here. Meanwhile, there's probably some startup in Indi uh, in an uh, Indian state or. Uh, that writes everything to the drive uh, that to the drive cell phone in squeal light and syncs once a day. You're probably right. Partition uh, instead of partitioning like because squeal light can have two billion databases, right? Two point two billion databases. So I mean theoretically you could just partition everything by by like car, right? You could just shard on car, sync 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 every thirty minutes. Lord Mako appreciate that. Uh, anyways. It's very interesting, these kind of things, because once you get into this level of, of what you need to do, you really have to I, I wouldn't, you really have to come up with some pretty unique engineering solutions, right? You really do have to go a little bit further out. But I, you know, I'm just curious about why, why is something why is something like Silo or these just larger distributed DBs that are fast and eventually consistent? Why, why build your own? I think I can say that they were ex uh, experimenting with private blockchains, uh, but it didn't go anywhere with it because blockchain is stupid. Oh, oh, they are doing a little bit of there's there's a blockchain play somewhere in here. That could that could be reasonable if that if that happens that that could I could see that being its own its own thing. <sighs> uh, L2 technology. Uh, the company faced unique challenges while migrating petabytes of financial transaction data into ledger stores. That's so much information. How do they? Ha How have they done that many transactions? Uh, it used uh, shallow and offline validation to ensure the correctness of the migration and per let's see and the performance and scalability of Ledger Store in the production environment. For shadow validation, Golf, St uh, Golf Storm was uh, double writing the data to D Dynamo DB and Ledger Store and compare the data returned by reads between the two data stores. Oh, that's a smart way to do that. So just doing shadow traffic effectively. You shadow traffic out to the Ledger Store, and that way you could actually see: Am I getting the same results back? Have we actually created a one-to-one -one service? And then you run that for a long time because that should give you enough variation that you should know if you've actually one to one it or if you've goofed it up. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think two reasons that Uber data might be complicated are that they're storing all the driving uh, paths for each trip and probably all the inputs that resulted in surge pricing decision. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the surge pricing. I never really thought about the surge pricing. The surge pricing is probably a reasonable thing that you probably want to kind of keep. You probably want to keep all the reasons why you're surge pricing. Because my guess is that surge pricing is probably one of the probably one of the most likely litigation vectors of Uber. And so if they can show you the exact reason why they chose to do it, I work for Uber. They're assholes. Okay, that's that's true. All of this is end certification of Uber. Yeah, the, I mean I think the big takeaway that I have right here is that remember, whenever you build something like this, your company also has to fund this. 
And these are one of the things that always typically never have enough people working on it. You never quite have the tools you need to do what you want to do uh, in this. It's always just like, it's always so underserved. And it can be very, very frustrating. I find that anytime we have a like any time a bespoke solution to a to like a, a more solved problem always ends up just being completely underserved. And you'll always see it, especially with like uh, ancillary tools, like being able to visualize what's happened or any sort of like debug or like, un, like any of that inspection side of stuff always is just where it really falls apart and it can be so frustrating. Additionally, Uber implemented offline validation for historical data coupled with the incremental backfill job running in an Apache Spark. The backfill process alone posed significant problems as the load generated by the process amounted to 10 times the usual production load. And the overall process took three months. I feel like if I was doing data transfer for three months, you're telling me 10 people for a back end and 200 people for the front end and app, I know. You're telling me, how would you feel having a process that ran for three months doing data transfer? Like, I feel like I would go to bed stressed out. I would wake up stre uh, 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 stressed out. I feel like at all points, I'd be, I'd be losing it. I don't even like running da like data transfers that take instantaneously that st go from one, one shape to another. I already feel like uh, the amount of just overall sweat that I produce for that one thing. It may just be bliss. Really? If you get this wrong, you'll cost the company $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Prime. Lastly, the team took a conservative approach towards the rollout and adopted a fallback uh, to fetching the data from DynamoDB. In this case, it wasn't found in Ledger Store. The overall mig migration was uh, completed successfully, and the company didn't experience any downtime or outage during uh, or after the migration. The move to Ledger Store resulted in significant cost savings with an estimated yearly savings of over $6 million. So they're going to be able to hire about eight engineers in the savings, maybe nine engineers tops. With those six million dollar savings, because you got to remember, anytime you ha anytime you save a million dollars and you hire an engineer and you hire like six of them, you have to hire a manager, and then in that you also probably have an HRBP. Uh, you also have all these other ancillary costs that goes with anytime you hire nine people, and so it's just like there ain't no way that they're gonna get that much. I can't imagine writing your own data store is worth six million dollars a year. The best part about hiring nine engineers is that you can now make the feature even slower. <laughs> It's a fact of life. I don't know. I'm just thinking about this. Like, I, I don't know if $6 million is the win of writing my own database, effectively. My own ledger store. Yeah, but I'm sure, I'm sure, again, I don't understand the data, and maybe this makes perfect sense. And if you were on the inside, this would just make more sense, right? I'm sure that does exist. It's just hard for me to, it's just hard for me to see it right now. Was it written in Rust, at least? It better, it was written in, it was written in Ruby. That's my guess. Did they open source it or is it 100% internal DB? My guess is it's 100% internal DB as of right now because there's no open source mentioning here. Let's see. I think they do uh, this for a lot of engagement, but it doesn't really matter, nor uh, was it a large project. It had to be large enough. I mean, they put their financial data in there. I would say that it's large enough to, to do something, right? I think just in the end, the amount of engineering cost that is required to run something like this has to exceed $6 million. It just has to. Because you're going to really have to have a team of engineers, support engineers, people on call, SREs, like just the amount of just things that have to exist to make this work is intense. And so I'd be shocked if there's somehow, if they run this thing with three engineers, you know every last employee there is just wishing for more features. If they run it with 20 engineers, you know every employee there is probably still wishing for more features because there's just too many engineers and nothing's getting done. But you just know for a fact that... It, it's going to be underserved if this is their target goal of savings. 125,000 rows a second for three months straight. That sounds very, very um, emotionally bruising. Are you sure it's not more about complying with regulators? It could be. Regulations? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Uh, but I'd be, I'd be a little bit surprised if it is because there's already so many financial databases stuff that I would be a little shocked if this is about regulations because it kind of feels like it kind of feels like that already uh, probably is already a pretty solved problem because, you know, there's all these other companies also taking in money, you know.